Welcome back folks. In today's episode I'm going to discuss putting together a OEM style toolkit for the Honda SL125. Now this project did not have a toolkit when I got it, not surprising. Many of these older bikes, especially trail bikes, uh, the toolkits didn't survive. And as part of the restoration process, I do like to try to recreate as close as I can the original style toolkit. So that's what we're going to do in this episode. I'm going to talk through a little bit of my thinking, how I go about it. And when it's all done, uh, we'll be closing in on having a toolkit ready to go in a little toolbox on the Honda 125. So let's I thought we'd begin a discussion by taking a look at the two currently available parts diagrams you can find online. Uh, these two images, I got both of them from the European parts supplier CMSNL. I think they're based in the Netherlands. I understand they're a very good supplier to deal with. I personally have never bought from them only because of the shipping cost and the distance to North America. But other than that I'd have no reason not to buy from them. But I did go to their website and took a look at these and looked up these parts diagrams and both of these are shown as currently available or what the parts or the toolkits look like for this this uh, series of bikes that is the SL125. The one on the left uh, is listed as being for the 1771, 1970, and 1971 SL125s. One on the right for the 72 and 72 and 73 SL125s. The only odd thing about that is Honda did not supply at least in North America an SL125 1970. So I'm not exactly sure where that came from, but both of these kits are shown uh, as viable and are those kits that were used or at least currently available for those model years. When I go to eBay and do a little bit of a cross-reference, I do see these same two kits available, used. There's quite a few out there. They're very pricey. People know what they want for these things. But there, uh, there's a, a lot of variety in terms of model years listed and which bikes they came from. I'm thinking Honda probably used these toolkits or a version of these two toolkits across multiple uh, models in the early to mid 70s and multiple model years. So at any one time it might depend on which one of these kits Honda included uh, with a particular model or model year. I'm not sure uh, either one of them is exactly the same that was included back in the day. But nonetheless, that's what I have to work with doing research between eBay and what I can get new. There is certainly a difference between these kits. I did identify it. The kit on the right, you can see right there, the red circles. Identify the tools uh, that are not included in the kit on the left. There's a difference of four parts, um, a feeler gauge, and three um, variations of wrenches. Uh, coincidentally, the, all the parts on the left side in the left kit here, all of these parts are still available from Honda, new. The parts that are circled in red over here are no longer available. I found that a bit of a coincidence. So you can, I could literally buy this entire toolkit new from Honda, including the bag. Now the, the bag, uh, we'll, come, we'll come back to that in a minute and a little bit more conversation about the bags themselves. I've got a different graphic I want to show you. The other thing I want to talk about is this handle right here. This is for the screwdrivers. That uh, is currently available, but it's black. I believe back in the day, the originals, and if my memory serves, because I did have um, a small Honda back in this era, the S90, I believe that the handle for the screwdrivers was red. And what's currently available, at least from the suppliers I checked, is black. Small item, I could probably get the red one if I really wanted to dig around long enough, but I just thought I would point that out. So there is a difference between these tool kits. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is pursue uh, getting the one on the left for uh, a couple of reasons. One is all those tools are readily available, though of course 
Some of these are too because they're the same, such as the pliers and the spark plug socket, etc. Um, and I have a suspicion for the SL125 that uh, left side toolkit was probably the appropriate one. So again, if anybody's got any different information, please feel free to share it with me. Now I'm going to go ahead and change the graphic, and we'll be right back, and we're going to talk about the tool bags. This graphic happens to be from Partzilla. Um, you've heard me talk about Partzilla before. They tend to be my preferred parts supplier. But there's a, a lot of other good suppliers out there as well. Don't, please don't misunderstand me. Let's talk about the tool bags. Partzilla shows right here in the red boxes two different part numbers listed for the tool bag. That would be item over here, number two. Uh, I suspect, because I've, been, I've done a little cross-referencing, that whichever one of those two part numbers here you order, you are going to end up with the same bag. And it is not the same as that bag. That's a side, what I would call a side load bag. I believe both of these part numbers, if you order them, will get you an end load. Or end, um, it's elongated, in other words, so the parts would be loaded in from the end rather than the side. That's my suspicion, um, because both of these part numbers, from what research I've done, show an end load bag that looks identical. So I'm not sure why they did it that way. That's my suspicion. So let's go ahead and set up at the bench and uh, we're going to talk through uh, some of my options and what my plan is going to First thing that I do when I'm intending to put together a toolkit for a project is I, I pull out all my used tools I have accumulated over the years. So these were not pilfered from other projects. I, I don't do that. Uh, I always send the tools out that came in with a project. All of these tools were given to me by other people over the years. There are a few of them I might have bought on eBay at one time or the other, but generally they were given to me by folks that had them left over from project that they worked, projects they worked on, or relatives or their kids have moved, moved away from home and left the parts behind when they were in the bikes as teenagers, whatever. So these are all just given to me over the years and I just keep them. And there are a mishmash of brands. There's uh, quite a few Kawasaki in here. There's quite a few Yamaha. I don't know if there's any Suzuki's in here. They're mostly Yamaha and Kawasaki, and there are a few Honda. You can see this original Honda wrench here. My point in all that is I will compare what I have in my inventory here to the parts diagrams we just talked about and see if I can fill in any gaps. Now if I can buy a tool new because they are quite inexpensive I will do so uh, simply because it will be in better shape and it won't be all uh, beat up and corroded like you can see here and this would well to make it look nice would require replating and then polishing. So if I can find uh, a good used tool in here that is suitable that I think matches the original I will do so. If not, then I have to go on a search for uh, for the part, either on eBay or wherever. But if I first go through uh, these, see what I can match up. And I was successful with two parts. These two uh, pieces, this little spanner wrench and this pliers, and that is Honda. I don't know if you can see that right there. This It's stamped HM. And this one is well, HM. The spanner and the pliers was in that mishmash of tools that I just talked about. And I believe these, especially the spanner, is probably the appropriate or right one for this toolkit. So what I did is I took these two out, cleaned them up as you can see, threw them in um, my polish or tumbler for a day or two just to brighten up the finish. It's in, they're in very good condition. They weren't really rusty. They had a little bit of a scuffing and crud and debris from being stored for years but uh, they weren't rusty so I just polished those up and as you can see I think they look really so good. these are the new tools that I ordered through Partzilla from Honda and you can see they're all brand new still in the bags plastic bags uh, this is that the um, tool bag or tool pouch and I indicated there's two different ones there's that the side flap version as well as this end load 
My belief is this end load version where the parts come in like this is original uh, to this model. I could be wrong, so if anyone out there knows different than me, please let me know. Again, these are, these are only like two or three US dollars, they're real cheap. And the rest of these uh, items do match the diagram uh, that we just talked about. Again, the uh, screwdriver handle is black. I suspect the original was red, if memory serves, but that's what I can get these days. I could probably find a red one if I look long enough. The other thing I want to talk about here was the pliers. I did order a new pliers. You can see here, um, but it, it's not an exact match to the one I found in my tool stash. You can see it's uh, a little bit smaller. The OEM part is a little smaller than the one I found on my tool kit, or, um, tool stash. This one does have uh, HM stamped into it, of course, and, uh, and it's physically they're different in size. I'm not sure which one I'm going to use yet. I probably will use this one only because I, want, I like the HM on it, the Honda Motor. And I suspect this is probably the one that was in the toolkit originally, but I haven't decided yet. And of course, the spanner wrench will be included, um, simply because I think that's the right one. That cleaned up really nice. Before I end this video, I thought I would show you the finished or semi-finished toolkit. I did make one change. I did decide to leave the uh, pliers out that I had in my spare tools. This is a little larger in length plier. Just because it, it uh, didn't want to really fit in there very well, I could, I could make it work, but since the new um, plier that I had bought fit nice and comfortable, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and use the uh, new one that I bought. You can see it right there, I think. So everything fits in there nice and comfortable. I think we're on our way to having a nice little toolkit when we're done. And eventually uh, you'll see this, well I don't know if you'll see it or not, because I'm going to go ahead and install it in the toolbox on the project bike. But uh, I'll talk about that or indicate that it's been installed later on when I do another review of the project uh, progress. That's going to be it for this video today, folks. Any issues, questions, thoughts, drop me a note. Otherwise, as usual, thanks for watching.